Hey everybody, Judah here with Judah Creative. Happy New Year! Now, I know in the last episode, I did a speed drawing of a uh, science fiction character and then I was supposed to go into Photoshop and do the coloring and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I'm gonna put that on hold. I've been doing illustration tutorials on how to create um, artwork specifically for the entertainment industry. So that would be like movies and video games and stuff like that. And so uh, what I'm about to show you is a, a sketch that I did after watching a handful of these tutorials. And I, I'm gonna kind of uh, walk through some of what I learned. And uh, if you can learn something from it, great. So let's get started. If you've seen my past videos, you've probably noticed that there are times that I started drawing with a pencil and then I come back in later and start inking things in. Uh, and then there's uh, other drawings that I have done where I just start with the pen. Sometimes I see the image in my mind much more clearly than others and the pencil just use as a tool to kind of map things out. If you've noticed right here, I did actually use the pencil uh, to map out the spaceships and that was to make sure that they were in perspective according to the rest of the scene that I'm about to draw. And that's one of the big things that has been stressed in the tutorials that I have been watching, is making sure that everything in the scene um, lines up with proper perspective. And, you know, if you've spent any time at all drawing, perspective is probably not a new concept. I'm sure you've um, probably seen tutorials on it or even practiced it yourself. But if you're like me, you kind of know how it works, and then you draw and sort of forget how to use it or just forget to use it a lot of times and so um, it's just been a great reminder that perspective is important it, it really helps a scene feel three-dimensional some of the other things that, that uh, they talked about is a value scale in other words what is light and what is dark in the scene and they really stress making sure that all of the items that are closer to the viewer is darker and all of the items farther away will be lighter just because of you know atmospheric um, diffusion of light if you've noticed you know for example when you look at mountains that are far away you probably notice that um, they're just a little bit lighter than the objects that are closer to you so you can use that to your advantage whenever you're putting together a scene to create the illusion of three-dimensional space. Okay, so keeping that in mind, that we need to use values, that is, darks and lights to our advantage. Things that are closer will be darker, things that are farther away will be lighter. It really speaks to how you should approach your drawings. Um, one of the biggest mistakes that I see beginners make uh, when they when they start a drawing is they make everything dark. If they're drawing with a pencil, they'll make really dark strokes um, right out of the gate. If they're drawing with a pen, they'll they'll do the same thing. And uh, this is a mistake because it eliminates your control over what's going to be light and what's going to be dark. So what you see me doing here, um, I started this drawing with a pretty thin ink pen, and uh, I try to make the drawing light at that and I sort of layer on additional um, shading to make things darker I sort of work it up to being darker um, and that way I maintain control over um, the darkest parts and the lightest parts um, of the drawing like as the thing unfolds as it progresses I have full control over what's going to be dark and what's going to be light I can create a, a full range of tonality uh, so like right now you you notice that I'm making that rock thing uh, really dark because it's the closest thing to the the viewer so with that in mind I want like the worm which is uh, one of the main features to be almost as dark but not quite as dark and uh, so basically the way that I achieved that was uh, just to layer on shading as I go just keeping that in mind that okay I'm gonna make this dark but when I'm done with it it's it, it shouldn't be as dark as the rock that's in front of the worm
Okay, so back to the uh, creating the illusion that there's three-dimensional space. One of the other things that I gained from the tu tutorial was actually something that I hadn't really thought a lot about, and that was creating a sense of scale using the objects that are in the scene. So if you look here, I have multiple versions of the worm. The worm that's closest to the viewer is the largest, obviously. And then we have that worm over on the right hand side that's sort of like in the middle and then a worm that's kind of far away. And uh, what that does is create a sense of depth. You get a sense that there is this chasm of space in between the two worms. And then whenever you add, like right now I'm working on the, the, those little cliff rock things, formations behind the worm that's farthest away, it gives the viewer a sense of distance between the worm that is closest to you, the worm that is farthest away, and then uh, the formations behind the worm. So it's a great tool for creating an illusion of depth. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If this is the kind of thing you like to watch, please click the like button or subscribe below. Until next time, have a wonderful evening. <laughs>